<laughs> Sorry. I was actually doing laughs. <laughs> I'm very excited. 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 Yes, 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 yes. I'm doing very good. I'm doing very good. Thank you very much. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Okay. Well, I guess it's pretty obvious what we're gonna do today. Um, um, um. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna be teaching you guys today a couple of things. A couple of things. Some mycology stuff. This will be specifically about um, the Amanita muscaria, which is, uh, I, I'm sure you've seen it in lots of kinds of media. We'll kind of be discussing that today. Um, it is, I suppose, um, it's very, it's very well known. Probably when you think of a mushroom, you'll, you'll, you'll think of, you'll think of this one. You know what I mean? Um, but it can also be called the fly agaric or the fly amanita, which is, um, which I'll, I'll get, I'll tell you the reasons why later, but, um, yeah, um, that's what we'll be learning about today. Um. I wonder if anyone knows anything about this. Um, before we get into it, I just wanted to mention um, um, learning mycology is really interesting and it's fun and it's a new it's a new and I suppose a somewhat forgotten study, like an area of study. You know what I mean? Um, I don't. I don't really like. Obviously, I don't have any certifications in mycology. I just like learning it for fun. This is something I'm studying purely for fun. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm trying, I'm going to try my best, but I apologize in advance if I get anything wrong. Um, obviously, I kind of work and study in the field of veterinary sciences and not mycology, but I think it's still really interesting and really fun. So I apologize in advance, all you uh, mycology experts, but I think we should get into it um, with starting about. So what what is this weird, weird mushroom thing? I'm sure we've seen it all in like in Mario, Mario mushrooms, Alice in Wonderland, the Smurfs. It's in a lot of folklore and um, and it's quite universally known, right? Actually, fun fact: it's uh, it's considered the world's oldest intoxicant. So it was found many, many, many years before alcohol was even a thing. Um, lots of animals would eat them to get to get fucked off their face. <laughs> a lot of people would too. Um, but we'll talk about that more soon. <laughs> Alright. So, um, let's start with identification. As you can see, we've got like a cross section and a kind of a graph of all of the different um, stages of growth. If you know anything about mycology, there's different stages of growth. Um, the Amanita muscaria in, in general is identified by different things. So we'll start, I've got like little, uh, little dot points in here, but I'll kind of be explaining it a bit more. Um, so, Amanita is the second second part um, kind of of the word and it means it means what family it's in. So Amanita is its own family. Um, a lot of mushrooms in the Amanita family that I've seen researched are quite poisonous. This one, if if dealt with correctly, it's not poisonous. Um, but basically every every fungi and mushroom in the Amanita family has white gills and are usually identified by its skirt. So if you can see up here, it's got, it's got a little skirt, you see, 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 under, um, under its cap, there's a little skirt, that's basically, um, oh, what's it called, it's like, it's, it's remnants of the partial veil, so under here, um, under this picture, you can see that there's like two little, two little egg sacs there. That's what the start of a mushroom looks like. Obviously, this is just like the fruiting part of the of the mushroom. Um, underneath, there's an incredibly big mycelium, but that bit up there is the start of the mushroom, and it basically comes out like it comes out of the ground. It comes out of the ground like 
And different things have break a calf, and that's mainly broken from that whole little egg sac thing. And that's also what the little white dots on the top of it are. Um, those are universal um, veil remnants. So the top is the universal veil, and the bottom is the partial veil, if that makes any sense. And I'll be showing you a time lapse of this soon. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're usually identified by their white gills, which is that part um, under the bottom of the cap. You see those? I guess they kind of look like gills. Two little... Um, gosh, I'm explaining this terribly. Wait, there's... Wait, there's... Can you guys see the PowerPoint? Did you guys see the PowerPoint? Can you see it? Oh, okay, sorry. I think I just got baited. <laughs> sorry. Okay, anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. I guess this is like the PowerPoint-ish. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's identified by its white little gills. Um, and the skirt or ring where its cap used to connect. Um, some have bulbous bases, which is like a, I, I suppose, like a bulb-like shape on the bottom. So a good way to identify it from the ground is to somewhat dig it up to make sure. It's very important that you check your mushroom before you take it because a lot of foragers die or get really sick from these or accidentally get high. <laughs> um, Amanita mascara mushrooms have a red cap, which is very distinguishable. I guess that's all what we've seen in like cartoons and stuff. Um, but sometimes they can have, um, I found when I was looking at pictures, they can actually have yellowish or orangish hues, little orange kind of like hues on top of their cap, you know? Ah, there I give you a kiss. <laughs> but this is like one of the most distinguishable pole parts, if you kind of look at it, is the little white spotty dotties and the red cap. Um... Yeah, so these little spots, as I said, are the remnants of the teeny wee growing mushroom cap. Um, but yeah, it's the fruiting part of the mushroom underneath them as their mycelium, which forms bonds with the roots of the trees. Um, this is called mycorrhizal. Um, essentially, this is a like a let me explain. It's like a it's a symbiotic relationship between the tree and mushroom, um, which essentially means as an exchange. Um, between both. So, as you've probably seen, some of the roots go into the... The roots... The, so, <laughs> the roots go into each other and they, like, hold hands and the tree receives nutrients um, from the mushroom and then in exchange, the tree gives the roots of the mushroom sugars, if that makes sense. Mm. Okay. Um, I'll kind of show you, like, because we've talked about, um, the white spots and stuff. I think it's important to show what it looks like when it's growing, like, what a mushroom looks like when it's growing from the ground up. I've got a, I've got a time-lapse video on here. Um, let me, let me show you. Let me show you. Oh, here it is. Oh, let me get out of the way. So, as you can see, it's going up. Look at those things spreading out. And see the skirt coming in. Skirt drops. Gills get shown up. I think they have, there's another one being shown. It doesn't exactly show it from its its like egg shape kind of form, but it still shows it pretty well. Yeah. Look at it go. Look at it go. It's so cool. Yeah, but see, each different one of the spores on the caps are different depending on the mushroom, specifically. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pop a link to this video in the in the description. They did a really good job at filming it in times that. So, so that's the kind of what I want to do. I want to get like a closet and fill them all. I want to fill them, not with these mushrooms, because I don't know if they're legal to grow. Because they're uh, used like recreationally. But, <laughs> but um... I want to get blue oyster mushrooms and do like a time lapse of them too, or something like that. Anyway, so I'll pop the time lapse off here. So, so these are the different stages. There's the egg stage at the bottom, and you see how the mycelium kind of grows out. So it's the, the egg stage. I call it the egg stage. I don't know what it's called. Then the button stage and the mature stage, and the gills sh like get shown at the end once the skirt drops. <laughs> They grow up so fast. Not that fast. Not like super fast. Sorry. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm quite nervous. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so if you look at the fully grown mature mushroom, I'll kind of explain a little bit of the anatomy for you. So at the top, you've got like the spots, which are the universal veil remnants. Please remember this. I will do a quiz on this for you. Under, I guess, the, the remnants is the red bit, which is the cap. Then you've got the, the gills right underneath. The partial veil remnants. And then all down there is, is the, well, it can be called the, the, the strip. Like, it's, I guess it's just the stem, isn't it? It's like, I guess it's the stem. Um, and then more universal veil remnants are kind of down the bottom, kind of going up. So the skirt's like the full, full amount of it, but it kind of usually, it's not on every one of them. It's kind of, it differs between each because, because it's naturally growing, it changes. It's, there's no like proper way to identify, um, not every one of them is going to have a sweet little skirt on some don't. Um, but a good way to tell is the gills and the cap. Yeah. <laughs> So now we're going to go um, a little bit more in depth as far as the chemistry goes. Um, so as I've kind of specified, um, the, um, the, the entire family that, the, that this mushroom is in contains some of the most dangerous chemicals. It's like really bad and it's also responsible for a lot of the mushroom deaths. I think over 90% when I checked. Um, but luckily, as we've seen, um, this one specifically does not have those, so it has different compounds, which is um, which is um, psychoactive. So it's kind of different from the others in this family. Um. Wait. Yeah, no, they are they are they are psychoactive, and it kind of that's how it kind of blends into um, that's how it kind of blends into everything else, if that makes sense. That's how it blends into everything else as far as the media. That's how like it kind of gets shown in the media. Um, so the psychoactive compounds um, are ivotenic acid and muscimol. Um, these are both like the the hallucinogenics in them. Um, and then it goes to um, then there's like the spooky bit, the deadly poison. So when you when you eat one of these mushrooms, if you were to eat them. Um, just kind of spooky. Um, you don't know how much of everything's going to be in them, if that makes sense. So, <laughs> you never know. You never know what's in them or what amount of everything in them. Like, maybe it has like a shit, like a shit ton of <laughs> muscarine in it. And you don't know and you'll die. Ah, scary. But yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, so these can kill you, The the, the muscarine can kill you, which is scary. It's basically a big, big old gamble, if that makes sense. Yeah. Boiling it breaks down. Yeah, well, that's what I'm going to be kind of speaking about soon. You see a little champion there. <laughs> How do I separate it? Well, we'll talk about it in a minute. We'll talk about it in a minute. Um, but also, like, there are other uses for the... Um, there are other uses for the mushroom. For example, the, the mushroom is commonly referred to as a fly agaric. Um, getting its name from when people, people actually used to use this mushroom. They used to put it in some milk. They used to dip it in milk and it would attract flies. And then the flies would, <laughs> the flies would fall in and it would kill them. They'd go and the flies would die and it would be really sad. Um, although like if you know anything about mycologies, it's called agaric, which is like another family of mushroom which this isn't, it's a manita family, so I don't really get what, I don't really get, it's kind of a, it's kind of a misconception, um, yeah, it's unrelated, but something cool about this is that they usually just put them in milk to, um, to brew them for, um, other purposes, mm. <laughs> I'm kind of going to be talking more about, um, 
some of the recreational uses. So on the, on the top here, we've kind of we're kind of talking about how to get this out. But the best way to the best way to, <laughs> to separate all of this. So, all right, wait. Actually, <clears throat> I'm going on a tangent. Um, so basically, this is a Smurf house, by the way. Who remembers the Smurfs? Good show. Anyway, oh gosh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I'm so nervous. Um, I don't know why I was so nervous. I'm scared I'll get something wrong. But you know, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, so, the funny thing about this particular mushroom, um, is <laughs> reindeers really love this mushroom, and I guess you can see where, where this is gonna go. Um, <laughs> some people actually used to follow reindeers around that have eaten these mushrooms to see what they do, and sometimes they'd lay on their, they'd lay on their sides and kick their legs to look like they were flying. Ooh, you know where this is going. Um, but it actually used to be used as a way to control the reindeer and to relax them as some of their properties are, you know, relaxing and I don't think people realized that they were psychoactive at the time. Um, <laughs> um, so, so it can actually be used to control big herds of reindeer because of its hallucinogenic and depressant properties. Um, but something cool about this specifically is they found out, people ages ago found out, and I don't ask me how this was found out, it kind of, it's kind of spooky the way that this was found out, honestly, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> but so once, so once this mushroom specifically is ingested by the reindeer, the liver will actually filter out all of like the, the, um, the poisonous muscarine in the, so like all of the poisonous shit will just be filtered, but it will keep um, the um, ibotenic acid and the muscimol, right? So, <laughs> so keep that in. Um, and what they used to do, and I think maybe they still do. So they they collect the piss, they collect reindeer piss and drink it, so it can keep the properties of the yeah they would drink reindeer piss to get fuck face basically yeah it's a whole thing i know i found this out and i did a big cackle to myself i think it's kind of gross but you know um but yeah so they drink it to give them a trip <laughs> i don't really want to talk too much about the recreational side effects of this other than kind of the you know, I'm sure some of you guys must have stories about what's happened if you've, like, ingested these mushrooms and stuff. Um, I've never done mushrooms, obviously. I never want to. I'm not, not really a big fan. Um, <laughs> I'm too scared to do that. But basically, um... <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to talk about any of that stuff. Time to chase some reindeer piss, no. No. Yeah, no, I'm not that kind of bunny. <laughs> um, but yeah, some of the effects of the consumption I've got like listed here. So, the muscle relaxation, physical euphoria, impaired coordination, altered perception of the world. And this is interesting because, okay, you know how in Mario, you can eat? You eat the mushroom and you grow. And you're more powerful. I kind of directly correlates to some of the um the physical things that happen not physical sorry you don't actually grow but some of the mental shit that happens like you feel like you're more powerful and you feel like you're bigger and stronger and your perception of the world changes right so <laughs> i think whoever made uh or whoever had the idea for the mushroom uh was maybe did something with mushrooms yes yes Yes. <laughs> but yeah, impaired coordination, altered perception of the world, hallucinations, which kind of makes me think maybe the person that made the, sm the Smurfs was on mushrooms or something. Um, color in in enhancement and auditory hallucinations. This makes me think also there's a whole theory about how the idea of Santa Claus and his reindeers was all from the fact that the uh, the reindeers were fucked off their faces on shrooms or something and they were on their sides and kicking so kind of looking like they were flying. Someone probably saw it and was like, ooh, the reindeer looks like they're flying. Let me drink their piss for whatever reason. And they drank the piss and they all got high together. 
And they looked at a certain reindeer, and because of the color enhancement, they were like, Huh? You, your nose, your nose, it is so red. Holy shit. Huh? What? 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 And then... <laughs> And then they start singing, and then he's like, he's like, oh shit, you know what? I can't get home. I'm fucked off my face on these mushroom things because I drank deer piss because I'm stupid. So let me just go home. Shit, I'm too stupid to unlock the door. Hey, I have an altered perception of the world and impaired coordination, so I'm going to somehow climb up on my roof and come home through my chimney to get home and he won't feel a thing because you know the the receptor is in his brain like probably a numb like the pain receptors um <laughs> so he probably went through the chimney and probably maybe maybe he like <laughs> maybe he maybe he like heard something no no maybe he went like on a shopping spree and got himself presents and didn't know because he was like really i don't know what what, what do you call it when you're on shrooms is it high is it the same as weed or something but yeah anyway so maybe he brought presents for himself or stole presents and put them in his house so he woke up in the morning and was like oh someone came through my chimney and i have presents what i need to tell everybody about the flying reindeer and everything else um yeah yeah <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a bit of a goose. I kind of... I didn't want to talk to... Uh, mm. Doubt this drug is test for... Yeah. Christmas lore dropped. I think there's a... I think there's... I don't know. I'm sorry. I, did, I wanted to put a lot more in because there's a lot more that I learned about these mushrooms. But I got really nervous because I didn't want to like... Um, I didn't want to get anything wrong <laughs> because I'm not an expert at mycology or anything, but I've been really enjoying learning. I know it's only been like 25 minutes, but I kind of covered most things that I've, that I've, um, wanted to cover. I, uh, I don't know. Um, I'm nervous. Um, did I do okay? I'm sorry. Did you guys learn a lot? Let's do a pop quiz. Let's do a pop quiz. Let's do a pop quiz quickly, okay? Wait, let me, let me cover this up. What? Wait, that, stupid. I'm kicking that stupid because it says it in the fucking name. Mm. Yeah, well, I guess this is my little lesson on mushrooms. Yeah, it has been 26 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I suppose this is my little lesson on mushrooms. It was short, but it was a, mu a, a lesson on mushrooms. Mm. I'm going to show you, like, the time lapse again because it's really fun. Wait, hold on, let's watch it again. Look at it go. Look at that guy. Did you guys learn a lot? That was great. I'm going to be doing something else in free chat in a minute, but I think I'm going to end the end the stream here for now. Um, considering that I wanted this to be in blocks, I want to pop all my mycology streams in and all my educational content in one in one block, so you guys can learn about it. Um, hopefully I'm going to be doing, um, a cool different thing each week. We've got two educational things this week, so we, we did a lesson, we did a lesson on these beautiful mushrooms this week, and we'll also be doing a marsupial stream too, um, which I'm very excited for. But I, I hope you guys en enjoyed, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna literally join back in a minute, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this a lot, and VOD Bros, hi, and, and yeah, I hope you really enjoyed, enjoyed it. There's lots more that I learned, but I don't want to put too much in. I want to trust myself to learn a little bit more, but yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes, they are perfectly edible if you prepare them right. Yes, that's definitely true, and I was going to speak more about 
um, how you can like um, dry them and stuff to make them, you know, a bit easier, like, and more, I suppose, more safe for consumption. You can think about it like a chicken. You shouldn't eat a raw chicken because that's going to, like, that might kill you. Um, but if prepared chicken right, you can eat it. But I also don't want to encourage people having drugs because I don't do drugs, if that makes sense. And yeah, I'll have more... I'll have more, um... I'll, I'll have more... I'll have more stuff on this soon. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll be back in literally one minute with something else. But um, yeah, I need to figure out what I'm going to do now. But yeah, I love you. I hope you guys enjoyed this educational stream. I got very excited. I think I got my energy up for... Oh my gosh, sorry. I'm really excited to learn about all this shit. It was really cool to learn about everything. <laughs> Guys, 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 I have a theory that the person that made the Smurfs was somewhat on Shroomies or something. I don't know. Do you guys remember the Smurfs? I love the Smurfs. Gargamel was actually a drug addict and it was a very sad show that we didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Gargamel, he was a little shit. Alright, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I love you very much. I hope you guys enjoyed this, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this, um, educational stream. I hope to do more of this in the future, hopefully something longer next time. Um, but I suppose this is just a starting point. Um, we can go on this journey about learning more about mycology together. So yeah, mm. Mwah. I love you so much. I'll be back soon. Alright, I love you. Bye-bye.